Yeah. 
a good pursuit by uh, Pio to limit him to about a three, maybe four yard gain. Nice. Second down, seven yards to go. For Starville going left to right here in the first quarter. Futrell up in the shotgun formation. Here's an inside handoff. Got a little bit of daylight over the 30 to the 32. Maybe the 33. It'll be very close to the first down. I believe it will be a little bit shy, though. He'll come up third and about a yard short. So a big possession play coming up for Starkle here on the first. I think they're may even going to measure it. It's that close. It is. <laughs> now they uh, nope. decided he didn't make it quite. First drive of the game. No score between Starkle in the white and Bio in the blue jerseys. Third and short. He's, uh, first down has been earned over the 40. He busted outside, he being Charlie Nicholson. Nicholas, he is a running back, and that'll be the first first down of the night. He goes to Starkville. A good, a good tackle again by Mamucci out there. Again, but just a good decision by the quarterback. Saw a little bit of daylight uh, around his right side and uh, took advantage of it. So first and 10 Ball from is the just 40. A, yeah, just a shade over the 40. It's in Starkville territory. Ten and a half minutes to play in the first quarter. No score. Futrell's a quarterback. He takes a shotgun again. He throws out the quick outlet to the left side. This time it's very gobbled up by uh, Jack Is that Jack Cartwright? That Jack Cartwright? Yep, I believe so. Very nicely played. Had one-on-one -on -one coverage out there. Had a blocker out there, Mike, but Cartwright shed the block and made the open field tackle. Yeah, and for a loss of about two yards a little more. So very good job there. But they are putting a lot of pressure on the uh, edges of that bio defense right now. Starville has three wide receivers in their packet. They also have a couple of wing backs along with the quarterback Futrell who's about five yards deep. Snap comes to Futrell. Quick out pattern. Incomplete. Overshot him. Had him open. He sure did. Uh, right at about the uh, line of scrimmage that uh, overthrew him. But you're right. I think he, he could have run for a good long way. Jay Lewis there on the coverage. If uh, uh, I, 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 I will say very, very loose coverage. But he was the closest one to it. So it's, yeah, it's his man, unfortunately. Third down, 13 yards to go for Starville. First drive of the game. Again, this is a big defensive stand here for Bio Academy. Future now flush on the pot, shotgun. And Bio intervened in the second. To the 40, the 30, the 20, the 10. He's going to go all the way. Touchdown, Bio Academy and Larson Ingram. Beautifully played by Larson Ingram. Stepped into the passing lane, picked it off, and took it 43 yards for a touchdown. Mark, I'm not sure if he didn't set him up on that because uh, he saw that pass all the way, and as soon as it left the quarterback's hands, he broke on it, and nobody was going to catch him. So a really good defensive play and uh, good hands. Absolutely. He played it like a wide receiver, Mike. He did. He, he, I think he was closer to the ball than the wide receiver was. He was. Like I said, he, he saw it all the way and just undercut the route and uh, was gone. Patrick Wessel stands in. He'll try the point after touchdown. I'm not sure what the slow up is here. Low snap from center. Wessel gets it through, however. 7 to nothing. Milo leads. 9.45 to play in the first quarter. That's exactly the start you want if you're a Bio Academy defensive alignment. That's right. You know, really good job there too by the uh, holder on that snap because it was a little bit low and he handled it perfectly and we were able to get it, you know, kicked with rhythm. So, uh, you know, those extra points become really important uh, in most ball games. So, good job by Bio all the way around there. Absolutely, Larson Ingram on the 40, we'll call it 43 yard interception return. We may have been off of the yard or two, but I think that's pretty close. That's pretty close. I think, Bio, the, go ahead Mark. No, I was just gonna say Bio gets on the board first, which is always the first punch. You always wanna throw that first punch, Mike. And, and uh, that was a haymaker right there, I tell you. Yeah, it was. Patrick Wessel now will stand again, try to kick this ball off on the 40-yard line. He'll kick it long down the left side. This will be very close to the goal line. He takes it at the three-yard line, back to the 10. Now he's going to be gobbled up. Can he get? Yep, they gobble him up inside the 20 at the 15. I'm not Slowed sure if that's down. not Vermucci again. Was maybe the first man on the uh, tackle there. That, so he's having a really good game right now. Ball 
is going to be marked at Starville's 16-yard line. This is where they'll start their second drive of the night. Futro looks, uh, he, he is obviously a passing quarterback, and he's uh, comes out throwing the guns. This time he's going to try to run around that left side. He got a little daylight over the 20. He sure did. Close to the 25, so nice first down run by quarterback Futro. Again, you know, really attacking the edges of the uh, bio defense. And uh, right there, a lot of success. Picked up about eight yards on that initial carry around the left end. Randall Futrell is the quarterback, as we talked about. He's listed at 5'11 and 160 pounds. And he is a senior. Futrell again back to throw this time. He's throwing for the long ball down the left side. Overshot his wide receiver. Joseph Smith there on the coverage, and pretty good coverage that time. It was, uh, but uh, thank goodness the ball was overthrown because as Joseph turned, uh, the receiver got about, uh, about a step on him. Yes, now, they did. are, you know, we're almost going down just straight man coverage, and uh, that's a lot of pressure on these uh, defensive backs for Bio right now. And I tell you, what their leading wide receiver is Brady Johnson. He's a, he's a senior number 80 right here, so keep an eye on him. Third down and very short. This time, Futrell takes it up the middle. He'll pick up the first down as he gets over the 30 to about the 32. Yeah, that and, uh, first down and then some. So, first and 10 for uh, Starville. Starville's second first down of the night. Mayo has not had the football offensively yet, but leads the football game 7 0 on a 43-yard interception return for a touchdown by Larson Ingram, if you missed it. First and 10 for the Volunteers. This time it's a snap back to the, no, it's not the quarterback, that's the running back. He'll uh, do a wildcat, and he'll get another first down over the 45 to yeah. about the 47. Charlie Nicholas, I believe, is that running back. And again, a little bit of uh, trickeration, if you will, but just took it this time right up the middle and found a lot of daylight. He had an earlier carry, Mike, so he is primarily their running back along with Futrell in the backfield. Showing as a lot of wrinkles on their offense so far tonight. They really do have a wing back, as we talk, offset to the right side. Hand off inside. Nicholas, again, got a little daylight. Get first down yardage, and, and he's going to be caught from behind this time. I think he thought he might go, and uh, Joseph Smith snack, snuck up from behind on him. Yeah, Larson Ingram also on that. But uh, yeah, he kind of, I think he slowed down just a bit when he turned around to look to see who was behind him. But uh, man, I'll tell you, they're kind of kind of gashing the uh, bio defense right now, really right up between the tackles this time around. So you kind of see their kind of pattern, kind of working the edges, get a little bit of uh, room there, and then right back up the middle. First down for the Volunteers. Again, inside handoff, Nicholas. He'll skip inside close to the 21 or so, pick up a three or four maybe on that first down run. Yeah, exactly. Picked up about three or four, as you mentioned. So second down and a good six, maybe seven yards for a first down. Bio's defensive line anchored by Matthew Short, Alex Lopez. Um, Alfred Hill out there. Yep. Carter Connell, this time a quick swing pass out to the left side. He's got it, Nicholas does. He's gonna be taken off his feet very close to another first down. It looks like he should have it, it I believe. Well, not sure. It's yeah, I yep. believe you're right, Mike. He did get the first down. Yes, so, barely, but but it is enough. First and ten for the volunteers. They're on the move. Very nice offensive series right now by Starkville. They've taken it from their own 16 down to the bio 15. And have another first down to go. Futrell by himself. It's a high snap, though. Futrell's going to run it down. He catches on a hop. Still makes a throw out there. Incomplete, however. You know, I'm a little surprised that there wasn't somebody ineligible downfield on that. You're uh, right, Mike. You know, scrambling for his life. And that worked out about as well as it could for Starkville. It was a high snap. It went over his head. We saw quite a few of those last week. Well, I would not seen a few more tonight. Yeah, but that took a nice Sunday hop for him. It did, and uh, like I said, he was able to pick up a receiver in the incomplete pass. You know, really picked him up about 15 yards from where he was. You're right. Second down, 10 yards to go. 
Pietro again takes it. He's going to try to run it around the right side. He does. He cuts it up inside. Inside the 10. Inside the 5. I don't know if he scored or not. Yes, he, yes, did. he did. Touchdown. Pietro has a 16-yard touchdown run for Randall Pietro. I didn't know if he's going to quite get there. He did. Made a good cutback and, and, and headed straight to that goal line. He does. I mean, he, he he is patient enough to find the hole. And when he does, he hits it hard. And uh, saw a little something he liked and turned it upfield and was able to bank it into the end zone. So Starwell is a extra point away from tying this football game up with 6:50 to play here in the first quarter. Snap back is good. The kick is away. It is also good. And with 6.50 to play in the first quarter, we're all tied up by 07 and Starkville 07. Now step aside, we'll take a quick break. We'll come back with the Starkville Academy kickoff. You're listening to Bio Academy Football on YouTube. Six fifty to play in quarter number one. Startwell Academy has answered the Bio Academy touchdown with a touchdown of their own. However, as we mentioned off the air, Bio hadn't even had the football yet. But we are lucky and fortunate to be tied seven to seven. So we get a good look tonight of you know what that Startwell defense looks like. But that second series by their offense looked awfully good. There's a brisk wind blowing, Mike, from the west. A little storm perhaps maybe brewing. It's a, it wouldn't surprise anybody to get a little rain here tonight. Yeah, I think we're going to get it. The question is how much. But he's kicking into a very stiff wind coming out of the west. So uh, Bio should be in pretty good position for a return if he kicks it away. Joseph Smith and Park Smith, I believe, are very, very deep. It's going to pooch it up. Somebody very better go boys. get it. Somebody better go get it. Futrell got it on the hop. Starville Academy has gotten it on the hop, and he couldn't have gotten a better hop. Yeah, that's actually, I think, Charlie Nicholas, uh, that running back. But, yeah, okay. for whatever reason, Bio seemed a little bit confused as to what to do. A, a simple fair catch would have been all that was needed. But uh, really kind of good job there by special teams uh, from Starville uh, to take advantage of that. Evidently, he must not be able to advance it because right. the officials brought it back to the 38-yard line in bio territory because Nicholas, as you mentioned, Mike, got a lot further now. Oh, yeah, he did. First and 10, Starville. I guess they just don't want the bio offense on the field. Well, we do. <laughs> <laughs> seven to seven is our score. Ball is marked at the 38. Now, here's some discussion now between the officials. Two turnovers, one for Bio and one for uh, Starwood. It was an interception, and then, of course, I, I guess you'd have to call that a fumble, Mike. I, I guess, but for, for certain, a turnover. Absolutely, because uh, it did go off uh, one of the Bio youngsters. Two early turnovers, one apiece. Futrell's a quarterback. He's got his ball club up there ready to go. Inside handoff. He'll pick up about three yards on the inside dive. I believe that's Lewis. No. Owens. Cole, yeah. Cole Owens. Cole Owens is a running back along with Charlie Nicholas. Randall Futrell, Futrell excuse me, is the quarterback, as we mentioned. Johnson is one of the wide receivers out far. Weiss is the other wide receiver. Second down and about six yards to go. Quick out pattern. He does catch it. He comes back, throws it a little behind him. Catch is made by Johnson, however. It'll be very close to the first down. You know, and really a very dangerous pass. That was just barely out of the reach of Larson Ingram out there on that right edge. 
Ball is spotted squarely at the 30-yard line. It's in bio territory on the left hash mark. Big third down conversion play coming up for Starville and obviously for the bio defense. Four-man line for bio, three linebacker set. Again, high snap, inside handoff. I don't think he's got the first down. But Larson Ingram there to make the tackle on Owens. Probably be about a yard short, won't he, Mike? He's sure you're good eyes, Mark, because he is about a yard short, but obviously four down territory down here where they are. So Well, you're Starville Academy, you're paying on house money right now. Yeah. You know, you just picked up a cheap turnover, so why wouldn't you go for it? Absolutely, and I don't know what you do with the win that you've got yep. from this particular field position. You really can't do much of anything else. You punt it, it probably goes straight up. Fourth and one to go. Futrell's got the first down. If he can swing it outside, he does. He gets to the 36, excuse me, 26, and does pick up the first down. Tell you, he's not a whole lot there inside. He just bounced it outside enough to make that first down. He did, and uh, I, I really thought the further he ran wide, the better chance Bio had, because he had it with that initial move that he had. But uh, anyway, was able to turn it up and get the first down fairly uh, easily. I think you're right, Mike. Bio's only cho uh, only hope was for him to yeah. kind of give some ground. That's right. First and 10, Starville at the 26. Nicholas takes a direct snap. He's inside the 20, the 15, the 10. And again, he just took the Wildcat snap and went straight ahead for another Starville Academy first down. I'm sure that is not a you know, total surprise to Bio, but it, it really does look like it is confusing the defense. And, uh, and it may be just you know man-to-man -man blocking and uh, they have one extra blocker when they do it that way. Uh, but it has been very successful for Starkville tonight so far. Goal to goal situation for Futrell and the Volunteers. Again, this time he hands it off to Owens. He'll slide up to about the five yard line. So again, nice three yard pickup on first down. Nothing really fancy that nope. they're doing, Mike. They're Some just really good combinations. They're just lining up right now. And like you said, keeping Bow a little bit off balance. Ball is marked at the five, second down, a goal to go situation for Startville. This is their third offensive possession. It is. Bio has not had one yet. Futrell again will follow his blockers in there and he'll score easily. Five yard touchdown run for Randall Futrell as he just followed that big offensive line on a quarterback draw straight into the end zone. You're exactly right. The, the, the left side of that offensive line on that particular play did a great job. Uh, he had a gaping hole to run behind it, didn't have to run very far. So uh, it was in the end zone uh, almost untouched. Starver lining up for their second extra point attempt tonight. Kick is up. Look, look at, at that win. I really, look at that win. It is good. However, <laughs> I mean, it moved 10 yards uh, to the north and to the south. Uh, that kicker is John Dillon Miller uh, and did a good job of getting it through the, the upright because the wind is really picked up. And I suspect we were fixing to see a little bit of rain. I just don't think I would try a field goal. Uh, no. Especially, well, it don't matter. Either end. You're not going to be able to control it. 3.52 to go in the first quarter. Start will 14 by 07. Bio has not had the football yet. Uh, in 14 to 7. And uh, here we're eight and a, eight plus minutes into the game. That is really odd, isn't it? <laughs> it really is. I mean, I got three a... possessions for Starville and not one, and uh, we're only behind by seven. I've got an un unusual score sheet I'm looking at here. Yeah, it is. I will now check on their kick return team. Hopefully they got some different instructions from the last one. Now, I would not hesitate to see the same. Well, I think you're going to, regard, unless he kicks it on the ground. Yeah. If he gets it up in the air, it, it, it may be coming back at him. Uh, so we really have to be prepared for that. Well, we've changed out a few of the hands guys here yeah. for the shorter kick this time. So well, I think the guys at second line is, is if he gets off a good kick, that's where it's going to go. Yeah, I don't I don't see it going back to Park Smith and Joseph Smith at no. the 10 yard line by but any I, means. If I were these guys, I'm waving for a fair catch. Uh, Starville looking for the kickoff. They're coming for. They are going to pooch it again this time. A fair catch is called, and Jack Cartwright yeah. takes it at the 30 yard line. So again. 
some learning right there. Bayou will take over at their own 30. Let's see what happens with their first offensive possession of the night. And that's a good job. I mean, again, calling for that fair catch, that ball is hanging in the air for so long. It's not kicked very far. Uh, you know, it'd be suicide if you didn't uh, call for a fair catch. So good job there. Gives them an opportunity to catch the ball without somebody breathing down his throat. All right, let's see how Bayou can react offensively. Now they're facing a deficit at 14 to seven. Dual quarterback situation. I believe Joseph Smith will take the first snap. He does. He's going to go for the bomb all the way down the left side to Cartwright. He's got a man holding on to him, and no, no offensive, no defensive pass interference. I cannot believe that. Um, I cannot believe that. That's really a fairly horrible call because, if anything, that's holding. How do you not see that? Well. I mean, he had his arm held as he tried to move back to the, you know, back to the, the middle side of the field to make the catch. He had his uh, jersey. It's absolutely well. That is a horrible call, which you know, you're gonna get. It's particularly foreign to us <laughs> to see bad calls. Yeah, but I mean, if it's if that it's, one was pretty obvious. If it's across the way. I, you know, I, I'm gonna kind of give them the benefit. That was right in front of us, Mike. Yeah, that, that's I'm about sorry. as bad as it gets. Park Smith in motion, left to right this time. Joseph Smith, excuse me, Larson Ingram now will take it. He'll try to scoot around that right side. He will. He'll get the first down. Oh, now they throw a flag. Oh, now you're right. Now we'll get a flag. Come on, guys. And Let's that may have been up. a hold out there. It may have been. Well, it was thrown really makes you kind of worry. Larson did get around that corner, though. I think he showed that speed. It is a holding call against Bow. Yeah. That'll be the first penalty of the night, the first official penalty, anyhow, against yeah, Bow. the first one that was called. <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's pretty bad. Yeah. Now, they did call that as a spot foul. So it'll be second down. No, first and, down. Well, it's second down. Second down. Yeah. You're right. Because of the pass play. That's yeah, right. Yeah, so second down and about 14. Second down, 14, as you called it, Mike. Ball is back at about the 26, maybe 27 yard line. That was, that was a nice, impressive run, though, by Larson. Yeah, it was. Uh, we might have moved a little early. Alford Hill on the inside, uh, the, the pass out of the backfield. He'll get up to the 35. Didn't we get away with a motion or not? Uh, if this was the Canadian Football League, no. <laughs> but if it was high school football in Mississippi, yes. So you saw what I saw. <laughs> yes, indeed. But that is not a makeup penalty. No, I'm that is not. That is not a makeup penalty. I agree with you 100%. But I'm Third, saying, these guys, maybe this guy on this side, he needs to open his eyes. Because Third down the five. Well, that's his call, though, I well, think. I get, well, I would think. I mean, he's going down the side looking for it. It doesn't matter. Third down, six yards to go. Inside handoff, Alford Hill has the first down. Cross the midfield, the 50, the 40. Hold on to the football at the 35. Alford is trying to just knock folks off and guard his regard, to, but that ball was kind of exposed there, Mike. Well, it was, but you know, Alford got past that initial line, and he's looking like I, I've never been out here in this much green grass by myself. Yeah. <laughs> you know, just an excellent hard run. Good and he job. did finish it off by knocking out two guys. Good job by that offensive line yes, it creating was. a hole because it was a hole there, Mike. Yes, it was. First and ten for Bow. Ball is inside the start will 30 at the 29. Pitch forward to Joseph Smith. He'll get a little bit of daylight. And he's still fighting inside the uh, 27 to about the 26. But he got bottled up pretty quick there. He did, but uh, did not go down. I mean, again, really good hard run. He earned the three yards they gave him, I guess. Not a, not a great spot, I'll tell you. No, at I the don't 20, think. 27 yard line. I thought he got inside of that. Second down, eight yards to go. Two minutes to go, first quarter. Start will 14 by 07. This time inside handoff, Alford Hills met at the line this time. He won't he won't even get back to the line. Start will play that one very well. Yeah, there was less than nothing there. I mean, he just had nowhere to go. Sets up that little outside option though. Third down and uh, probably closer to 10, though, maybe maybe about eight, eight and a half, maybe, or so for the first down. Alford Hill's going to step out. He's going to check out of the game. There's some confusion. So Bio's going to have to call a timeout. 131 to play quarter number one. First 
timeout charge to Bio Academy. We'll step aside, we'll take it with them. Start with 14 by 07. We'll be back in a minute. Here comes the rain, Mike. Here we go. We'll step aside and take it with you. Welcome back to Bio Academy football. The rain has started coming down here. 131 to play in the first quarter. Starkville leading 14 to 7. Bio is facing a third and eight from the Starkville 28 yard line. Joseph Smith in the pocket to throw. He's looking to throw. Now he's going to pull it down. Try to get to the outside to get the first down. He has done so and goes inside the 15. Really, really good run. And also setting up some of his blocking downfield. But, uh, you know, when he gets around that corner, he is deceptively fast. And I think some of the Starkville guys are understanding that he is fast. Because they could not catch up on just an excellent run. Offered Hill back in the game. So it may well have been a helmet issue that he uh, needed to come out for. Ball is marked, Mike, I think at about the 11 or maybe the 10 yard line. Not sure exactly where it is. Very close well, to the Well, they don't have a yard marker out, so, no, so it must be inside the 10. 10. First and goal to go for the Colts of Bio. Larson Ingram going to be bottled up. Not a whole lot of a room there, and he's going to actually, I don't even know if he'll even back, get back to the line, Mike. Doesn't well, look like he did. As you mentioned, there was nothing there, and uh, if he. If, I can't tell if he picked up anything. Uh, I was at no gain. No, he actually lost a couple yards. He's back to the 12. Okay. So, yeah, you're right. Second down and goal to go. I guess at the 12 yard line. There's 30 seconds to go in the first quarter. Bio does have the wind at their back. Not that that's very appreciable right now. Larson Ingram going to throw it out to the side. Jack Cartwright catches it at the 10 to the 5. Going to be pushed out of bounds at the 5. Couldn't quite get that last block, Mike. No, he didn't, but nice throw and catch. And, and really right now we're in the middle of a uh, pretty good uh, downpour. Uh, so that was an excellent pass and catch under the current weather conditions. Good for me. I think as soon as this, this one line goes through here the rest of the night, the, the, the conditions are going to be nice. But good. 17 seconds is all that remains here in the first quarter. Starville leading 14 to 7 over by. Man in motion is Park Smith. Larson Ingram going to try to sneak it in the end zone. Can he get there? Touchdown, Bio Academy and Larson Ingram. Well, we're an extra point away from a tie game here. 11 seconds to play in the first quarter. And believe it or not, I do think that was uh, really advantageous that we scored going this way because we're going to be kicking down wind. I think you're right, Mike. That's a good point. 11 seconds to go here in the first quarter. William Wessel stands in. He'll try to tie this football game up. Good snap from center. Nope, it's a low snap. It doesn't matter because William Wessel drills it anyhow. Good, good, good pick up that time. That was really good kick because it, the, the hold was a little bit dicey. Yes, yes it was. All right, let's step aside. We'll take a break. We'll come back with a bio kickoff. 14-14 is our score with 11 seconds to play in quarter number one.
Patrick Wessel comes forward on the football, and he will kick it into the end zone. Hits at the five and rolls into the end zone, so Starville will take over at their own 20-yard line as we get close to the end of the first quarter of play. A torrential downpour is coming down right now, and uh, <laughs> I don't know, other than not quite blowing sideways, my but it ain't close. far from it, is it? It is not. There's a pretty good breeze howling out of the west. So uh, Bio is just about to turn back into that wind. But, you know, with this amount of rain, I'm, I'm not sure anybody's really worried about the wind. I think you're right. Inside handoff to Nichols. Gets up about four yards. And that will run out the end of the first quarter with Bio and Starkville Academy tied at 14 apiece. All right, 14 all after one, Mike. Shootout we thought so. It is the kind of ball game we were looking forward to. A step aside, we'll come right back and get some more rain drenched second quarter action. You're listening to Bio Academy. To Bio Academy football, Mark Hargan along with Mike Portner here. Second quarter begins, and Randall Futrell is stacked up after a very short gain up to about the 26 yard line. And Jay Lewis on that tackle. It is a uh, monsoon right now. It's just about side to side, ain't it, Mike? It is. <laughs> so they get that third down, uh, third down, and about four yards to go. I can't even hardly see the white yard markers across the way. Well, that'll be a good excuse for us. That's right. We're already <laughs> blind. Third down, four yards to go for Star. We're going from right back to left here in the second quarter. Futrell is a quarterback. He's about five yards deep. Bio has jumped off sides, yeah. so I believe Star will get an automatic first down. They we all. That's a freebie right there. It is blowing sideways, folks. It is. I'm telling you. Now this thing, this 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 squall line was moving pretty quickly. Well, not, not quick enough to suit me, but pretty quickly. So once it's out of here, we're good behind. Well, we'll see. Flag down. Starville did get a first down on the five-yard penalty against uh, Bio Academy. 14 to 14 is the score. What's it looking like? It's. It, we're good once it's through. Okay, well maybe so. Right yeah, we're right in the middle. We are dead set in the middle of it. Where is Jim Ken Corey? <laughs> out, at the, out at the 50-yard line. I hope I don't see him now. <laughs> First down, 15 yards to go, a five-yard penalty against Starville. Futrell trying to get around that right side. He'll be stood up at the line of scrimmage. Met by Bio Academy there, no gain. I believe that was Alfred Hill there on uh, that tackle. Well, actually, he did pick up a couple of yards, maybe. I'm drenched, and I can't imagine how those people out on the field are, uh, the, the, the fans down there. Are any fans down there? Yep. There's still fans down there. Second down, about 14 yards to go for Starble. This time we're going to try to run it to the left, trying to pinch him in. He got a little daylight. Holding probably will be called on the corner. So. Gets up to the 35 before he's tackled, and that's Nicholas on the run. Probably in a holding situation, if yeah. I had to guess, Mike. There's that one flag. I, I thought I saw another on the side of it. That may be, but I think we're at Stone here. Holding for sure. Yeah. Nicholas, Nicholas did have a good run, but he did have a little, a little assistance, I believe. Help. He got a little help on that one. I tell you, turnovers right now could be crucial too. You know, in this in this environment, you never can tell. 
10 yard penalty against Starville. Now it's gonna be about second and about 25 or so, roughly, if I'm ciphering about right. Uh, it looks good to me, Mark. Futrell high snap over his head. Nope, good, good hop does Futrell get. He throws out of the back. It could have been intercepted, broken up by Joseph Smith. He was, he was late, late throwing that football, but he did get a good hop there. That's he the did. second time Futrell's gotten a, a very good, nice fortress bounce. And, and like he said, he was late, but there's a good reason for it. Oh, yeah. Just a good job of uh, uh, fielding that snap and uh, really looking downfield and finding an open receiver. Third down and long. The uh, they show torrential it's... rain seems to have eased off a little bit. Now it's just raining hard. Third down and 20. He snapped it to the quarterback. He was not ready for it, and he'll be sacked. I tell you, Future was lucky he held on to that football right there. Yeah, he is. I, I, I'm not sure Starkville as a team was ready other than the center uh, for that particular snap because you got wide receivers that are still out there looking around. I think you're right. If I'm bio and there's a punt, I am not fielding this well, football. Yeah, this <laughs> might be a time to put everybody up on the line of scrimmage. Yeah. Because you ain't going to catch it back here. I might would. an opportunity to block one. I don't know if you can see it with the rain exactly. coming in. So I would. I, mean, I, I don't know. He may get it off, though. And maybe they can stop a roll. It is a low snap. He's going to be in the backfield, and he does kick it out of there. A nice punt, however. It's a safety. Why is it a safety? Did he put his knee down to catch it? He must, have put it, he must have put his knee down to try to feel that punt because they called the, they called the safety right off the bat. Yes, it was a low snap and the punter went to get it. Must have. And he evidently did drop his knee to the turf. I, I, I couldn't see it myself. No, but I mean, he did a good job of getting that punt out of there. He sure did. But, well, that'll be a safety. That'll put the bio Colts ahead 16 to 14 as we continue watching this rain go from West to east. Yeah. You know, At about 60 I, miles an hour. I don't believe that the Starkville coach saw his knee go down. And he's discussing that with the officiating crew. I didn't see it. But in any event, we'll take it. And uh, they will now be uh, picking off to Bio. Uh, in this instance, they're going to have to field the ball. Think you're going to kick it long? Well, I. You know, I might even try a punt and get it up there where you're like you're talking about. It's very hard to feel in this kind of storm. Starville will kick off from their own 20-yard line after the two-point has been earned by the bio defense. Yeah, I think I'd bring my deep receivers up a little bit. Yeah, I think I would too, Mike. But they're having trouble even holding the football. Well, right absolutely. Now. Holding it on the tee will have to have a holder.
I don't know how long I've been off. I think I've been off. I put it off while ago. So we're back on now. First and ten. Nope, I'm sorry, it's fourth down. Now what's gonna happen? We're gonna call another timeout? Yeah, it sure. That's a little unusual. They're on 20. Yep. All right. We're three minutes and four seconds to play before halftime. The rain is finally starting to slack off just a little bit. Kind of recap this. Bio got the kickoff after an 80-yard kickoff. Got it at their own 20-yard line and is driven from their 20 all the way to the Starkville Academy, I believe, nine-yard line. So Bio is facing a fourth and two to go here with three minutes to go in the second quarter. Be nice to punch this in if for yeah. some way we can do that, Mike. It would. The uh, rain has certainly slacked off, but field conditions are pretty sloppy right now. So here we go. Fourth down, two yards to go. Bio used back-to-back -back timeouts there, so they have none left in the first half. Carl has play. all theirs. Joseph Smith going to try to follow his blocker, and I don't know uh, if he uh, got uh, it or not. It does not look like he did. I do not think Joseph picked up the first down, and if not, Starver will take over. Came up about a yard short, I do believe. Yep, I think you're right, Mike. Starver will take over. That's a big defensive hold, holding uh, hold stand for the, for for them. For the yeah, stand absolutely. for, for, absolutely. The, for, for Starver back at their own 10 yard line. Bio uh, did a good job, though, of uh, flipping field position, working their way back against, again, a, a really tough win. Rain has almost stopped, not quite, but has almost stopped. Starville now operate out of their 10-yard line inside, and oh, they ain't gonna pump it outside, does Nicholas, and he'll get a, about five yards on that play is what it looks like, and that's not Nicholas, that's Owens coming on the left side. About second and six. About six yards to go. Starwood has moved from their own 10 to about the 46-yard uh, line. Futural this time is going to take it himself. Gets a, escapes from Luke Ward and going to be run out of bounds, but I think he's got another first down. He should have a first down and did a good job of getting out of bounds and uh, stopping the clock. So really plenty of time left with a minute and 22 seconds left in the quarter. Futrell looks like a very experienced quarterback. He knows where that first down marker is and simply got to it and boy, he got skidded out of bounds. Yep. Ball's at the 40 yard line, a shade inside maybe as Starville lines up with their offense. Again, inside handoff, this time to, to uh, Nicholas. Again, another 10 yard, 15 yard gash. They're just gashing the bio defense right now. Yeah, really kind of making it look easy. But you got to admit, you know, really good job by their offensive line right now, just really having their way with the uh, bio uh, defense. Owens is the running back. He's checked in. He's checked in to give uh, to give Nicholas a little bit of a breather. Uh oh, there's an offensive. Well, now that should be. Yeah, that's exactly right. Their left tackle looked to me like he flinched. He did. And that should have been a draw offside. And, uh, he did. That's going to be illegal procedure against. Uh, against Starkville. Yep. Clock stops at 105 to go before halftime. Starville trails 16 to 14, but they're driving to try to put go-ahead points on the board here right before halftime. Ball's back at the 31-yard line now, first and 15. Again, Futrell this time will call his own number. That's going to be have to be a hole, but nothing's called. Out there, the 20-yard line inside the 20 to the 17. I sort of got held on yeah. the corner. But, again, it did help, didn't it? I think it really helped. Yeah, I did too. But, again, they're doing a really good job of, it, you know, kind of looking inside. If nothing is there, they are very quick to bounce it outside. And they found a lot of open uh, uh, ground out that way. Short of the first down by a yard. Second down and about one yard to go. Futrell again is the quarterback. He's in a shotgun. He's going to hand it off. He does. First down is earned by Nicholas as he sinks inside the 15 to the 13. And they have plenty of time left with 50 seconds uh, and three timeouts. 
Bo is supposed to get the ball to start the second half, so Starville certainly wants to run out this clock here in the second quarter. Again, hand off to Nicholas. This time he's going to be bottled up and knocked off his feet at the 12. So he lost a little bit of yards there. Field conditions may have gotten him a little bit there. It, it looked like he slipped a little bit and uh, really uh, for no gain at all. Got a lot of coaches in the stands far across the way. I hear them hollering, time out, coach. <laughs> Second yeah. down, 10 yards to go. This time, Future, Future puts the ball on the ground, but I believe he's covered it back up. And I suspect they better call timeout now with about 15 seconds left to go. They will. They will call a timeout now. 15 seconds remains, and that's a kind of a nice break for the Colts right there because they were yeah. all set to do student body right, Mike. They were, and i tell you the other nice thing about that was about a four-yard loss on that play as well. So it's third down and about 14 uh, to go, but I think the main feature here is 15 seconds. Well, they got a kicker. Oh, they do, and uh, they got the win. Yeah, so they, you know, if they get to a fourth and long, they don't necessarily have to go for it. No, they don't. No, they don't. 15 seconds is all that remains here before halftime. We're in the second quarter. Bio is leading 16 to 14 on the shoulders of a safety that they uh, got back around the first and the, the second quarter. Yeah, on a uh, down punt. Well, a punt, a punter that downed the ball uh, on a uh, uh, mishandled snap. 15 seconds remain here in the second quarter. Starville now will check their offense back on. They do have two timeouts to go in their pocket. Futrell is the quarterback. He's about five yards deep. He's going to roll to his right. He's looking. He's looking. He's still looking. Now he throws it toward the corner of the end zone. Could have been intercepted. Nope. Knocked away by Joseph Smith. Ooh, that would have been big. That would have been. Uh, but now we got that decision. Fourth and 14. Uh, maybe not the best pass that he's thrown all night. No, and I don't think they're not they're not looking to send the kicker on. I don't think. I the, the quarterback don't. is coming back from the sideline where he's just had a conversation with the head coach. So it looks like they are going to go for it here on yep. fourth down. This would be a big hole for Bio, just like Starkville came up with a big hole just a few minutes ago. Fourth down, 13 yards to go. The ball's at the 16. They can get a first down at the three. Eight seconds to go in the half. This time, Futrell is going to take it. He's going to run it to the left side, and he's going to get knocked. Uh, he's bounced around, and he's going to get into the end zone. Wow. That is one heck of a run right there. Yes, it that is. That is one heck of a run. Bow had uh, every opportunity they could to tackle him. Uh, but again, a very, very hard run. And uh, he absorbed a couple of hits and still was able to get into the end zone. So give him credit. I mean, uh, just an excellent uh, bit of running. Yeah, Bo did not lock him up. They had a chance to actually knock him out of bounds. And, yeah, they did. And they tried to make the big hit. And well, just, he absorbed that, didn't he? He, he did. He kept on moving. But he bounced off that hit and found his way into the end zone. Give the kid credit. Yep. 20 to 16 now is the score. Time has run out here in the first half. They, of course, will get the opportunity for the extra point, and he does drill it through. It's good. 21 to 16, so Starwell has to go in on an extreme high, whereas a little bit of air has come out of the bio balloon right here. It has, but, you know, you give him credit. That was a very uh, clutch drive uh, from down on their 10-yard line, uh, 90 yards, uh, time running out and really a clutch run there to uh, end the uh, first half. No question about it, Mike. 21 to 16 is the score. Start with 21 and bio 16. We got halftime activities here, so we're gonna kinda yield the microphone here to the PA announcer so they can kinda announce the homecoming court as wet as they are. We're gonna let them kinda talk about it. We're gonna step aside. We'll be back in a few minutes. You're listening to Bio Academy Football.
Service Club and Our Lady of Victory's Catholic Youth Organization. Mariella participates on the Bio Academy cheerleading team and track team. She attends Our Lady of Victory's Catholic Church. Mariella is escorted by her father, Mr. Charles Ciccarelli. Her flower girl is kindergartner Aniston Page Nichols, daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Bailey Nichols and Miss Madison Gant of Cleveland. Mary Ella Ciccarelli. <laughs> Sophomore maid, Taylor Lynn McCain. Is the daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Kurt McCain of Cleveland. Taylor has attended Bio Academy for two years. She is currently serving as Sophomore Student Council Treasurer. 
Taylor is a member of the Cuba Christian Connection Team, where she has served on six mission trips to Cuba. She is a member of the Bio Academy Basketball and Track Teams, Community Service Club, and Cotillion Club of Cleveland. Taylor is a member of the Bio Academy Cheer Squad. She is a member of the Mississippi Jazz AAU basketball team representing the state of Mississippi. Taylor attends the First United Methodist Church of Senatobia. She is escorted by her father, Mr. Kurt McCain. Taylor's flower girl is kindergartner Sarah Bridges Campanova, daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Van Campanova of Shelby, Taylor Lynn McCain. Sophomore maid, Kaslyn Winters Myers, is the daughter of Dr. and Mrs. Shannon Myers of Cleveland, and Miss Jennifer Winters of Jackson. Kaslyn has attended Bio Academy for four years. She is a member of the Fellowship of Christian Athletes, Bio Community Service Club, and the Grammy Youth Leadership Program. Kaslyn participates on the CE All-Star Competition Team, Cleveland Cotillion Club, and she attends the Chapel of the Cross Episcopal Church. Kathleen is escorted by her father, Dr. Shannon Myers. Her flower girl is kindergartner Eden Blake Powell, daughter of Mr. and Mrs. John Powell of Cleveland. Kathleen Winters Myers. <laughs> Junior maids. Evelyn Rose Farinelli and Mary Michael Farinelli are the daughters of Mr. and Mrs. Jeffrey Farinelli of Cleveland. Ella has attended Bio Academy for five years. She is a member of the National Honor Society, Community Service Club, Cleveland Cotillion Club, Junior Auxiliary Crown Club, and the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Ella participates on the Bio Academy cheer squad and track team. Mary Michael has attended Bio for five years and is a member of the Cleveland Auxiliary Crown Club, Cleveland Cotillion Club, Fellowship of Christian Athletes, Bio Community Service Club, and the National Honor Society. They both attend the First Baptist Church of Cleveland. Ella and Mary Michael are escorted by their father, Mr. Jeffrey Farinelli. Ella's flower girl is kindergartner Maggie Grace Earls, daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Josh Earls of Lynn. Mary Michael's flower girl is kindergartner Ava Francis Olivi, daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Brian Olivi of Marigold. Evelyn Rose Farinelli and Mary Michael Farinelli. Junior May Marley Caps Mancini is the daughter of Mr. Paul Mancini Jr. and Miss Leslie Mancini of Cleveland. Marley has attended Bio Academy for five years. She is a member of the National Honor Society, Bio Community Service Club, Junior Auxiliary Crown Club, First United Youth Group, and Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Marley participates on the Bio Academy softball team as well as the track and field teams. She attends First United Methodist Church. Marley is escorted by her grandfather, Mr. Owen Richards. Her flower girl is kindergartner Morgan Richardson, daughter of Ms. Chandria Richardson and Mr. Jamarcus Johnson of Rosedale. Marley Caps Mancini. Senior maid Mary Madeline Britt is the daughter of Mr. and Mrs. John Elton Britt of Indianola and Mr. and Mrs. Justin Braswell of Cleveland. Mally has attended Bio Academy for 12 years. She is a member of the Fellowship of Christian Athletes, National Honor Society, Mu Alpha Theta, Cleveland Cotillion Club, Community Service Club, all-American Cheerleading Squad and is currently serving as Senior Student Council Class President. 
She participates on the bio soccer team and is the cheerleading squad captain. Mally attends First Baptist Church. She plans to attend the University of Mississippi and major in health sciences. She is escorted by her father, Mr. Elton Britt. Mally's flower girl is kindergartner Anna Grace Melton, daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Lawson Melton of Cleveland. Mary Madeline Britt. Senior maid Carly Ann Rogers is the daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Brent Rogers of Cleveland. Carly has attended Bio Academy for six years. She is a member of the National Honor Society, Mu Alpha Theta, Community Service Club, Fellowship of Christian Athletes, Cleveland Cotillion Club, Cleveland Crown Club, Grammy Leadership Youth Council, and St. Luke's Youth Group. Carly participates in the Bio Academy soccer team and cheerleading squad. She is a member of St. Luke United Methodist Church. Carly plans to attend Northwest Communi Community College and is currently undecided on her major. She is escorted by her father, Mr. Brent Rogers. Carly's flower girl is kindergartner Mary Hensley Murphy, daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Andy Murphy of Bull. Carly Ann Rogers. Senior maid, Addison Marie Vargas, is the daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Robert Vargas of Bull. Addison has attended Bio Academy for six years. She is a member of the National Honor Society, Community Service Club, Fellowship of Christian Athletes, Cleveland Cotillion Club, Junior Auxiliary Crown Club, and Our Lady of Victory's Youth Organization. She participates on the Bio Academy soccer and track teams. Addison is a member of Our Lady of Victory's Catholic Church. She plans to attend Northwest Community, Community College where she plans to play soccer and is currently undecided in her major. Her flower girl is kindergartner Alden Kate Cunningham, daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Joshua Kyle Cunningham of Marigold. Addison Marie Vargas. Hey, you got the envelope, right? Senior maid, Priscilla Presley Watley, is the daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Thomas Watley of Cleveland. Priscilla has attended Bio Academy for six years. She is a member of the National Honor Society, Mu Alpha Theta, Community Service Club, Cleveland Cotillion Club, and Fellowship of Christian Athletes and the All-American Cheer Squad. She participates on the Bio Academy Cheer Squad and track team. Priscilla is a member of Church of God. She plans to attend the University of Mississippi and major in exercise science. Priscilla is escorted by her father, Mr. Thomas Watley. Her flower girl is kindergartner Allie Rose Aldridge, daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Peyton Aldridge of Cleveland. Priscilla Presley Watley. The Queen's Flower Girl is kindergartner Anna K. Little, daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Kane Little of Bull, and the Queen's Crown Bearer, kindergartner Jace Anderson Wasson, son of Mr. and Mrs. Eric Wasson of Cleveland. The 2020-2021 Homecoming Queen, okay. Peyton Diane Young, is currently a freshman at Mississippi State University. Peyton Diane Young. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Bio Academy's 2021-2022 Homecoming Queen is Miss Addison Vargas. <laughs> Academy Student Council would like to thank Mr. Bill Powell for the photography 
and Miss Leslie Williams, owner of Happy Petals, for the floral arrangements. Also, the Student Council would like to thank the parents, school board, administration, faculty, students, alumni, and fans for supporting these homecoming festivities. This concludes this year's Bio Academy 2021-2022 Homecoming. Yay, Emily. Welcome back to Bio Academy. We're at halftime here where the Starville Academy volunteers pushed across a touchdown, Mike, on the last, absolute last play of the first half to take the lead, 21 to 16 over Bio Academy. Had a full, full first half, though, I'll tell you, with rain pelting down from west to east. I mean, just almost for going sideways. A lot of action. Uh, good defensive stance, some not so good defensive stance. Some good offensive plays, but overall, just the shootout that we kind of expected. You know, Mark, and uh, you, you made the point of while we we're talking at halftime. You know, really that touchdown was part of about a 14-point swing because Starkville held Bio down at about the 10-yard line where Bio was driving for a score and then turned around and scored themselves. So uh, the last about two minutes of that half was huge for Starkville. Absolutely it was, Mike. Bio was forced to call a couple of timeouts down on, as they were trying to punch it in and just end up, just didn't, wasn't successful. And obviously, as you mentioned, Mike Starville had a nice goal line stand down there. So 21 to 16, the good news is that the uh, Bio did pick up a, a couple of cheapies, I'll call. Uh, not really cheapies, but uh, freebies. And in terms of the very first offensive drive, the nice Starville, Larson Ingham stepped in, intercepted the ball, ran it straight back for a touchdown. We also picked up a safety on a errant uh, snap from the center when Park Starville was in their own end zone and a punter apparently went down on one knee. So, but we did get one more touchdown and again, Starwell again with three Randall Futrell running touchdowns. And he was a force all night, Mike. And he has been. He really has. He's a good little quarterback and then of course they got two good running backs as well. So, Starwell 
in all reality, I mean, they dominated the line of scrimmage more so, I would say, than Bio did the first half. And again, they controlled it. They certainly controlled the clock. I think I there's any question about that. So, going to be interesting to see what Bio comes out here in the second half. You know, they're very, very confident in their running game. And in the conditions that we had, uh, that really played into their hands. Uh, they were in no hurry whatsoever and did not get away from the run, even with clock uh, running down on them. I believe that last drive, only one pass was thrown, and that was incomplete through the end, back of the end zone. Bio's got to get back up. That was a little heart-wrenching last play of the first half, so Starville certainly went in on a high, and I'm sure the coaches had their full responsibility of let's get this thing back, uh, let's get it back. So I'm sure they're well, you know, first order business. They do get to receive the football. They being Bio Academy does get to receive, so they'll get a chance to make a statement on the front end. And I think that's exactly right. You, you get your chance right now as uh, they have to kick off to us. So uh, I really think that the tone will be set here at the very beginning of the second half. Still a little wind from the west, and it is blowing yep. and it looks like it looks like bio will be receiving from the west which means that they will have the wind of their back in the third quarter which unfortunately means Starville will have the wind of their back in the fourth quarter but you know the thing that's interesting i do think the wind is actually kind of quartering around not so much directly out of the west right now but out of the northwest so it may be by the fourth quarter this thing may be coming across the field you're right normally they light it up don't they is that what I'm missing? The baseball or softball yeah. lights are usually on. Yeah, they are, and it's not tonight. Okay, we're all set for the second half of play here. It ought to be a good one. 21 to 16, Starville leading here as we head into the third quarter. Rain has stopped. That's a good thing. Bio Academy will get back Park Smith and Joseph Smith along the five-yard line. They have a row of defenders at about the midfield stripe. They have another row at about the 40-yard line, and there's a big gap between the 40 and the 10. A little pooch kick will again be taken. This will be a fair catch. It will be called for and taken by Jack Cartwright. So uh, if you're Bio Academy, I would take that all day long. You got the ball at, as well. You got the ball at the 40-yard line. I, I just don't know why you wouldn't take that. Now, I wish Jack would declare that uh, – you know, fair catch a little sooner. <laughs> you know, you know, just makes you a little bit nervous, but uh, in any event, great field position to uh, start this second half. Bio quite eager, of course, to right the first half wrong. So let's, let's finish this up. Let's get right back on the board. Park Smith in motion. Quick pitch to him going forward. He's going to be tackled behind the line of scrimmage and a penalty marker Probably. in the backfield. Yeah, Probably a hold. I don't know if you're Starville, you may take the play. I don't know, it's a 10 yard penalty behind the line of scrimmage. Though, yeah. so that's a pretty pretty sizable penalty. If that's what it is. Yeah, it looks like they're looking at Starville. So it's gonna be against Bio. Now well, that's gonna back and Usually them. it's a hold right there. I can't imagine they would decline that penalty, but second, it'll put it a 10 yard mark off from the 38 yard line. So that should put it at the 28, making a first and 22. Now for the Colts of Bio Academy, not the start you were looking for. No, it was not. Park Smith had been going in motion an awful lot in the first half, but did not ever get the quick pitch, the forward pitch that he so famously has made, made uh, uh, pretty positively for the for the Colts this year. Tells me the Starkville coaches said, "Watch him," because he. You're exactly right. You know, it's a decoy the entire first half. First down for the Colts. This time they're back at their 38. A quick, quick throw out here to incomplete to Jack Cartwright. Ball was short-armed a little bit out there. Just didn't ever get out there to him, so it fell incomplete. And I think as far as Jack is concerned, uh, that's a major whoo because they had that red. They really did. Had it well played. Yes, they did. Second down, 22 yards to go now from the 28-yard line. Got to get up to the midfield stripe to get that first down. So a long way to go for the Colts here, the opening drive of the third quarter. Low, little, little de Slow. deliberate here. Yep. Second down in motion is Joseph Smith. This time Larson's going to try to throw it out to him. Got a man, nope, nobody's going to be intercepted at the 45 to the 40, 35, 30. 
25, still on his feet, cutting back across the grain to the 20. And he's gonna look to lateral it, I don't know why, but he's gonna be knocked off his feet. I was simply thrown up with way too much air under the safety, read it perfectly. He did. was what a safety does. I mean, I like the pattern if the safety's not where he is, but uh, safety, as you said, really playing a center field type position, had that pass all the way. and. Uh, did what he needed to do, caught it and uh, made a very uh, sizable return. So not the start that uh, Bio needed. No, it wasn't. And like you said, it was just like a center fielder back there. Yep, he, he saw it. First and 10, Starville at the 17. They're in excellent field position here to start their drive. Inside handoff to Owens. Not a lot there on the, on the first offensive play for Starville. They know that this is a freebie though, so they certainly want to pile on right here. Yeah, I mean, this is, you know, this is a time for them to really put this game um, partially out. Of reach. Well, just so, put a little distance anyhow. Yep, absolutely. Long way to go here. Early moments of the second half. Bio trails 21 to 16 to Starville. Second and nine from the 16 yard line. This time, Futrell again ups up the gut to Owens running hard. Here's a flag yeah. down in the middle of the field. That looks another hold type uh, throw there. So I hope we'll it's, see. I hope that's what it is. Yeah. Holding, Holding against Starkville, so that will back them up, as you mentioned, Mike. But as a spot foul, it's not going to be quite as devastating as some of them have been. Ten-yard mark off from the spot, as you mentioned, puts it back to about the 22, 20, 23, maybe something yeah. like that. So second down and about uh, 14. That's right. Futrell has two wide receivers to his right, none to the left. He's looking to roll to the right. He's going to run it, though. He slips down in the backfield, however. He might have got back to the line of scrimmage, but he just simply lost his footing. Yeah, and I think field conditions right there did uh, play into it. A uh, little bit slick right now and uh, lost his footing. Third down and long to go for the Volunteers. They're dressed in white tonight, as we mentioned. Their colors are blue and orange, but they uh, have very little blue and very little orange tonight. Yeah. A whole lot of white, and it's uh, getting pretty dirty. I have seen some of their uniforms, and they are loud. <laughs> yeah. Third down, about 14 yards to go. This time, Futrell does throw it to the corner of the end zone. It's up for grabs. They're going to be out of everybody's reach, and it goes simply incomplete. Man-to-man -man coverage on Johnson was Jack Cartwright. Had it pretty well covered. I uh, thought he did a good job of that, of uh, kind of turning the hips and trying to find the ball. I, I think with that wind again, it's blowing a little bit across the field right now, and it really took that ball, uh, I think, more out of bounds where it would have been uncatchable. Looks like Starbuck was going to line up for a field goal attempt. It'll go from the 28-yard line. Well, he had an 80-yard kickoff. <laughs> uh, he's got the leg to get it there. This will be a 38-yard field goal attempt. Not quite the wind, though. Good snap from center. The kick is low, and it's going to be no good. It's over to the left. It was a low pull kick from the start, and it's simply no good. So Bio Academy dodges a nice bullet here to start the third quarter. They did, and uh, I think that holding penalty really came at a very good time and uh, really kind of put them behind the sticks, and uh, Bio was able to hold them. So no uh, harm done, and uh, Bio gets the ball first down from about, I guess, Mark, is that right at the 20? Maybe the 21? I believe it is, Mike. Maybe about the 20-yard line. So, so Bio basically lost about, four, about 20 yards on that exchange and, and two minutes worth of time off the clock. First and 10 for the Colts. They'll go from right to left. This time, Joseph Smith will take it right up the gut. He'll have a nice first down gain over the 25. So about a about the five yard gain, it looks like. Yeah, I think that was Larson Ingram, actually, on the uh, carry. I think you're right, Mike. It was number 10. That's Larson Ingram. He and Joseph Smith, of course, interchange at quarterback. Yeah. Matter of fact, uh, and I think Joseph's over there, uh, really kind of on the, the the right slot. He is maybe like a, like a wing back, so it really really gives the defense a lot to worry about. Alford Hill is in the backfield alongside Larson Ingram this time. Pitch pitch to Joseph Smith going forward. He'll try to get up to the first down. He won't quite get there. He'll be a couple of yards shy, but but he took a pop there at about the 28 yard line. Yeah, that was a pretty good hit right there. 
Colby Allen uh, was the uh, Starkville player, and uh, he was getting up a little bit slow as well. But uh, good, uh, good hard tackle, and uh, Bio is about a yard short of the first down. Starkville played that one pretty well. They, they swung did. it out very well. Ball is on the left hash mark. I can't believe I could even see a hash mark, but I do. Third down and about a yard to go, as you mentioned, Mike. Park Smith in motion. Joseph Smith takes the first down, and he will earn it over the 31 as he just simply bulls his way for a nice, hard-earned first down for the Colts. Like you said, he earned that. It was not easy, but uh, got got enough for the first down. So uh, a little bit of a kind of confidence builder for Bio right there. I would have taken that about 98 out of 100 right there. Yep. You know, 8.35 to go. We're in the third quarter. Bio trails 21 to 16 but has the ball here going in the third quarter. Ball is up over the 30 to about the 30, maybe the 31 yard line or so. They're on the right, right side of the field as you're looking at it and see it. They're going from right to left. Park Smith, he'll take that forward pass. He'll get to the 35, juke a man, try to get up to the 39. So again, a nice eight yard pickup, maybe seven or so for Park Smith on first down. Had a little room to run that time, and that's he really the, the most run, most room he's had tonight. It was. Uh, ran it to the short side of the field. I'm not sure if I don't like him running to the wide side of the field, though, uh, with, with that speed of his. Second down. We'll call it three yards to go. Bo trying to take the lead or retake the lead here in the third quarter. Joseph Smith will operate at quarterback with Larson Ingram beside him. Alford Hill has now slid into the tight end, uh, the jack, jack part right now coming, he's looking to throw a, a receiver pass, now he's in trouble and he's going to be dropped behind the line of scrimmage. So just too much time there. Yeah. I almost would have wondered if he would have just thrown it incomplete somewhere and avoided that big loss. But he's under a lot more pressure than I am. Yeah, and the other thing is too, on a, on a positive note, he did not like what he saw downfield and didn't just throw it up for grabs. So I do appreciate that. Yeah, he went from a second and three though to a third and eight. So it was a loss of about five. Now Bo's got a little uphill they've got to make happen here in the third quarter. Joseph Smith, though, he's looking to throw it, throws it back, and ball is going to be incomplete, throwing to Larson Ingram. Thank goodness the linebacker didn't see it. Didn't look up, but, yeah, the ball was a bit overthrown. Uh, for a minute there, uh, Larson had to, was open. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was, Mike. And, uh, again, just uh, as you... As you mentioned, it was good that that linebacker didn't look up because he had a good chance at an interception. Clock is stopped on the incomplete pass, of course, 6.45 to play in the third quarter. He had to be off sides. Or he's a, he's a heck of a timer. Anyhow, good punt from the 30 to the 25, the 20. The ball is still rolling. rolling. Number four had to yeah. be off sides. But no, no flag. I don't see a flag. I think he had I a think, heck of a jump. I think motion has not been really the strong suit of this officiating crew. That pass interference. Oh, that was horrible. But but still, I've seen a little bit of movement yeah, on both teams. That That's right. has, has been largely ignored. That's right. Starville will take over on the punt that they'll take over at their own 24-yard line. 6.37 to play here in the third quarter. I would really like to make a stand here. Inside handoff going back to the well, and he'll pick up five, six yards straight up the gut. He being Owens, the running back for Starville. He's a load, too, I tell you. He's yeah. got a couple of running backs. I tell you, that's a pretty good size on this Starville team all the way across the board. Cole Owens and Charlie Nicholas are the running backs. You've heard me mention Nant Randall Futrell. Yeah, a lot. He's a quarterback. Second down, four yards to go after a six-yard gain. This time, Futrell will take it himself. He'll get the first down over the 30, still on his feet to the 35. Now we have a late flag I'll, coming in, and I don't know what that's all about. Well, I, I'm wondering if they're going to if they're going to maybe think that there was a face mask or something there. That was so late coming in, though. I don't. I don't know. I do not know what that call is. But the ball is at the 42-yard line. If it stands, he'll have another first down let's for see. Starbuck. Yeah, let's see what they – yeah, face it, mask. It is a face mask called against Bio. It'll just be a five-yard mark-off 
<laughs> you know, I quite honestly did not think he got the face mask. So he did get, he did get him up around the uh, collar, but uh, I did not think it was a face mask. But I think the fact that his head was kind of wrenched around, uh, that's what they might what they thought they saw. But first down, Starville ball is at the 47 yard line. It's in Starville territory. Just under six minutes to play here in the third quarter. Starville going left to right, inside handoff again. Going to be stacked up as Owens at about the 48-yard line. Oh, he didn't get a good spot at all, thank goodness. That, that referee gave him a terrible spot. He, he got up to about the 49. He did. I mean, they turned him around. Uh, they did adjust it just a little bit, but uh, really, really a good track, really good tackle by Luke Ward there. That's a very fortunate spot for the Colts. Yeah. Second down, we'll call it nine yards to go for Starville. Future of the quarterback. And we're in the yeah. neutral zone, and we do not need that. That's all sides against Bio. That'll be a free five yards for the Starkville Volunteers. Now that spot looks a whole lot better, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, and I don't know exactly what caused that, but two two coats jumped off side yep. simultaneously, so I don't know if it's the quarterback barking signals. I, I just don't know. Second down, four yards to go for Starkville. A low snap. Hey, he he went down on his knee. He went down on his knee, but yeah. they did not call it. He caught a safety for less than that. <laughs> you know, just a minute ago, but I it's thought he old. did. He touched his knee down to catch that snap. Yeah, there's another call that was dubious. Let's just call it. Ball is at the 47-yard line. Maybe I missed it. I don't know. I, don't know. You know, I think Maybe we've been entirely it. too easy on the officials this year. So yeah. we can make up for it in this last game. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe, maybe <laughs> I missed that one. No, we didn't. Third down and a very important four and a half, five yards to go for the first down. I do know that. Probably uh, a tight new situation here for Bio. That's eight men in the box. That's got to be an offensive penalty yeah. right there. He jumped. The offensive guard yeah. got a cam out of his stance. There we go. That'll move it back to about third and nine, which I don't know. I don't know. Futrol now will come, probably come out through it now. Well, I don't know. You know, he's pretty confident if he needs to pick up 15, 20 yards just in running it himself. Yes, he's done a good job. He certainly he has. has. And it's very difficult to get down. Third down and nine for Starville. Ball is now moved back into Starville territory at the 48. This is a this is a a nice key third down play right here for the Colts of Bio. Three wide receiver package here, two to the right, one to the left. Futrell is looking to the right. Now he's going to be flushed in the pocket. Now he's going to throw long. He's going to throw it out of bounds. Incomplete pressure that time by Larson Ingram. As you mentioned, Ingram bringing an awful lot of pressure right there. And he just got rid of it. I don't think that's a bad play. I think you're exactly right. That'll force a punt situation for Starville. So Joseph Smith and Jack Cartwright will get back. There'll be twin safeties at about the 25-yard line when all is said and done. Maybe even the 20. The, the punter is the kicker as well. So no telling what he's going to do. I thought he's going to go down there. That is a driving punt. He's going to be caught by Jack Cartwright at the 20, looking for a block to the 25. He does get up close to the 30, and that's where the wild, by the bio coach will take over their second offensive possession here. The well, third offensive possession, actually. And then that's really a pretty good job of fielding that punt because the, the wind is now. Did he go all the way down? The wind is uh, really kind of blowing uh, more out of the north now, so a, a really good job of uh, coming up with that. First down, Bio Academy. Ball will be at their own 29-yard line. There was some discussion about whether the punter went out on his knee. He was very close. He may he not did. have, but he was very close. He, I, know he, that. I think they gave him the benefit of the doubt that time. Maybe so. First down, bow. Ball's at the 29. Need to put together just a nice, nice little long drive right here, kids. In motion is Park Smith. The inside handoff, though, goes to Alford Hill, I believe. He'll get three or four yards over the right tackle. <laughs> Didn't breast it out, but did get a solid three or four on the yeah, first down they, run. Where they marked that. Yeah. Good eyes mark, so about a four yard gain. Playing some uh, football that the old Big Ten would be proud of, aren't they? Yep. You're right. 
boy, closer to five. I had really would look at it, but second down, mid-range we'll call it here in this as the clock continues to run at 345. Quick throw out to Cartwright. He's got a blocker out there for the 40, 45. First down over the 45. Yeah, you got to watch there, Mike, about a holding call. You aren't kidding. Um, as it goes, it was just an excellent block. That's right. <laughs> I think it was very close. But you have two kids out here, two wide receivers out there. There's a good chance one of them's going to get called for holding. You're exactly right. But uh, we're not in an excellent uh, uh, pass and catch and a, a good game for Bio. First down at the 48-yard line, we'll call it. Still in Bio territory. This time, Larson Ingram will take it right up the gut. He'll maybe get a yard. Not a whole lot there for Larson. Now, a lot of, just a lot of log jam there. Not a lot there, but did uh, eke out about a two-yard gain. Second down, we'll call it eight yards to go. Ball's about a step shy of midfield here, still in bio territory as they march right to left here in the third quarter. Start with leading 21 to 16. This time, Joseph Smith will roll to his right. He's going to be tackled in the backfield. Actually, he'll sling him forward to about the line of scrimmage. So he really won't lose anything, but won't gain anything either. They had that play well diagnosed. Yeah, and just uh, you know, really good pressure by the defensive line. He, he didn't really have any time to even look downfield and uh, was pretty much running for his life. But as you mentioned, uh, you know, really was able to at least get by with no loss. Third down. A good solid seven plus yeah. yards to go for the first down. Got to get to about the 43 yard line in, in Startwell territory. Clock continues to run at two minutes to go here before the third quarter comes to an end. Startwell leading 21 to 16 over the Bio Colts. Snap is there. Ball, they dropped, dropped the football. Larson Ingram went to throw and it just simply slipped out of his hands. He was fortunate to get on it, but it just simply the wet ball slipped out of his hands. We actually had some uh, open receivers here, but uh, like you said, I think again, field, field conditions play a part in that. The ball was wet, just slipped out of his hand, as you mentioned. Fourth down, about 12 yards to go, so this will this will mean Bio will get their punt formation back. Joseph Smith will check in. Good snap from center. Kick is high, it's a booming kick, gonna hit it to about the 15 and roll dead inside the, I can't even tell. Very close to the, can you tell? About the three yard line. Very nice punt that time by Joseph Smith. So you've got the, you've got Starwell pinned back now at the, their own three yard line. So let's see if maybe a little good fortune can come our way. And you have at least for the time being, I mean, the wind is not quite as against as it was in the first half, but it's still in your, you know, favoring you a little bit. So maybe we can hold them down here and get away with some pretty good field position. First and 10, I guess the ball is actually marked at the 10, I mean, at the five yard line. Somebody's called timeout, I believe it's Starbuck. Well, Starville has called for a timeout. That's their first timeout here in the second half. So let's step aside, Mike. We'll take it with a 1-11 to go in the third quarter. We'll step aside. You're listening to Bio Academy Football. Bio Academy football, 111 to go before halftime. Mike, you know, we this, this game, of course, does have some certainly playoff implications as we talked about. I know Bio and Starville and Simpson and several of the teams are buying or jockeying for that that playoff position. So uh, a win here tonight would be huge for either one of these teams. It, it will be for First one of them. First and 10. 
It's time Futrell will go to his left. He'll be, well, I thought he was going to be stacked up behind the line of scrimmage, or he may have gotten, he may have gotten a yard or so, but Let's not see much. What mark, no, he did not. Well, I think that was about as simple a play as you can get. It was kind of student body left that time, wasn't it? And just sort of try to run in behind that line, and uh, Bio was there for the challenge. Galladay there to make the tackle. He's a freshman, of course. Clock is running with 40 seconds to play here in the third quarter. Again, this time Futrell throws it out wide, incomplete, well covered. And the ball kind of sailed on him a little bit, didn't it? Yep. It was well covered, though. It was. Two receivers kind of in the same line of vision. He overshot one and just barely overshot, he way overshot one and yeah. barely overshot the other one. Third down and 10 to go. Let's keep them backed up, guys. Right here, third down and 10 to go. It's like, I think those Starbucks will have the win that they're back in the fourth quarter, which may or may not play into this. We'll have to simply wait and see. If you can hold them here, you might be wise to use a timeout. You might be. Third down, 10 yards to go, or if he throws an incomplete pass. He throws in the middle of the field. It could be intercepted. It is intercepted by Joseph Smith, and he slips and loses his footing. But Bayou does have the football at the 32-yard line. That was up for grabs. I could tell it when he threw it, Mike. It, it was, and I, it's a really good catch by uh, Joseph Smith. Almost overthrew him. He really did. But unfortunately, the field conditions, uh, he slipped as he turned to uh, run. Now, I'm thinking he probably had five or ten yards that he could have picked up pretty easily. Yeah, but there again, we'll take it. We'll take it. Ball's at the 32-yard line, 32 yards away from pay dirt, so we really, really need to stick this one in there and get that lead. 21 to 16 is the score with only 20 seconds to go here in the third quarter. You know, and the importance of special teams. They got that ball down there. Uh, Absolutely. You know, really deep, and uh, we're paying the uh, benefit of it right now. That's exactly right, Mike. Larson Ingram hands it off to Joseph Smith around the left side, the 30 to 25, and run out of bounds on the near side. 13 seconds to go in the third quarter. 21 to 16, Starville is leading. There's been no scoring in the third quarter by either team. Again, probably one more play, but you know, again, look at the change in the wind direction. It has really come around, uh, really out of the northwest now. Second down, he one yard to go. He picked up nine, of course, on that first down run. Joseph Smith was in the slot. He went in motion. This time, Larson Ingram sends Park Smith in motion. This time, Larson will take it inside the 20, the 15, the 10, inside the 10 to the nine. First down for the Colts as we slide inside the 10-yard line, and that will. The ball is, uh, the clock stopped right now, but I think they'll probably start it up after they mark the chain, so that will yep. probably be the last play of the third quarter. Yep, they will start it. Four, three, yep. two, one. That's going to be all the third quarter. 21 to 16 is the score after three complete periods of play. Fourth down, fourth quarter. This is what everybody plays for, Mike. Twelve minutes to go. It That's is, and uh, you know, both teams, you know, right there. So, uh, you know, kind of third quarter was sort of absor absorbing some body punches, and uh, both teams did. So we'll see what happens here as we start the fourth quarter. As we mentioned, Mike, the playoff scenario. I believe both teams are probably pretty safely in the playoff mix. As you know, there's there's only 17 five. A schools in the state. So out of those 17, 12 of those go to the playoffs. The first four, the top four, get buys for the first weekend. And then you have number five through 12 plays each other. So if you could happen to win this game, whoever wins this game is going to be right now probably in spot number four, yes. which would be a buy. And even if you don't win this game, you'll probably be in the five, six, seven, eight range. So, but still, it would yeah. go so much further to get that by. You know, and that would be so nice to, you know, win this game. You would have a, a buy in a home game, I, I would assume. But if you can hang in there and at least maybe get that first round game at home, would 
would also be a, a huge uh, achievement. So let's look at uh, making start. We'll have to worry about that. That's exactly right. 12 minutes to play. We're in the fourth quarter. First down, goal to go situation at the seven. This time Ingram is trying to go around the left side and he will get there. Touchdown, Ball Academy and Larson Ingram. Seven yard touchdown run. You go for two, Mike, here. You're up 22 21. Well, since I see the coaches saying go for two, yeah, I would. <laughs> well, I mean, it makes logical sense. It does. You know, you're up by one. Uh, I, I, so it does make some sense. I tell you, I, I'm not sure I wouldn't run the same play. <laughs> yeah, I would. I Touchdown. Tell you. Seven yards by Larson Ingram. You know, the, uh, you know, Park Smith's motion is causing a little bit of havoc with that Starville team. I mean, they are really paying attention to it. It is opening up some holes with them going in the uh, opposite direction. So, you know, even though he hasn't got the ball much, it's been a pretty valuable player. Here we go with the extra point, the two-point conversion. They snap it to Larson Ingham. He throws it to the corner. And he's up the ground. Got it! by Jack Cartwright. Nice throw, nice catch. Two-point conversion is successful, and that puts the Colts ahead 24 to 21. You know, that's really just a great matchup. Have a tall wide receiver, some good hands, and he just threw it up there and said, go get it, and he did. That's why you have him 6-3 playing wide out. Yep, and, exactly uh, right. It wasn't that it wasn't well covered. He just out-jumped him. He did. So, uh, a pretty gutsy call, but but uh, very effective. So, Bio kind of turning that momentum back in their direction right now, haven't they? Absolutely. Two point conversion is good. 24 21. Bio now leading Starkville. There was no scoring, as we mentioned, in the third quarter. It was 21 to 16 at halftime. Now it's 24 21. And again, only five seconds gone here in the third quarter. Bio will get their kicking unit on the field. Again, I don't mean to make too much of the win, but it, it is it is whipping up and whipping around there. But uh, it, I mean, it's significant. It's just not quite back dead into it. But it's going to make anything that gets up in the air, you know, a little bit difficult to play. Star Wars got their receiving receiving team back. Now, now yeah. why, why are we stopping it? I think they're maybe trying to get some people out of the corner of the end zone. Oh, I see. You're there. exactly so, right. Uh, it's just an official's timeout trying to clear the field. Who would be in the end zone? Well, I don't know. I don't want to call names. <laughs> <laughs> I just wonder why you're even in there. There's a pooch kick straight up. A fair catch is being called and taken at the 40-yard line. Why are we... What? So Starville now will have the advantage of the excellent field position as Bio pooches it and uh, takes it, gives it to Starville at the 40. I don't know about that. Yeah, at the 42-yard line actually is where they'll get it. So that's, uh, that's a really, really good field position for, for uh, Starville to start this drive. Yeah, you know, I wouldn't mind just kind of pounding it in the ground right down the middle of the field. And, uh, you know, kind of go with a long squib kick. All right, first down for the for the volunteers. Inside handoff, stood up. No, now he's going to forfeit. They got to get him off his feet. Nice run by Nicholas after pick up a five yard. That's good hard running there. Uh, Nicholas, yeah, that was. I'm surprised that he really, I mean, he had those legs churning. I'm surprised that he had the, the footing to allow him to do that, but he did. And uh, as you mentioned, hard run picked up uh, a good five yards. He got he got hit at the line of scrimmage. He sure did. But he churned forward for additional five yards. Second down, five yards to go for Starkville. Again, low snap, handoff again. This time, got arm tackled at about midfield. I believe that was uh, I believe that was Alford Hill there reaching out and grabbing him. I tell you, he, he was swiping that ball. I thought he yeah. might have had a chance to get poked out of there, but he didn't. Third down, two yards to go. Ball is dead on the 50-yard line. Got to get to the 48, the startable to keep the chains moving here. Isaiah Galladay, nose tackle there. Four bio linemen 
straight up there. Fearsome breaks that line of scrimmage, gets the first down and more as he goes to inside the 35 to the 33. You know, right. that spin move that he has is extremely effective. I mean, he has used it a couple of times and uh, has made it work for him. Bio had a really tight pinched in formation at at the nose tackle position and boy once he broke that line he had a nice little open feel for it. The ball is at the 32 yard line it's in bio territory right now going from again right back to left here with 10 20 to play. Future, nope, this is Nicholas, straight up the gut. He's still going and dives inside the 25 to about the 24. Again, nice. that's just Wildcat uh, formation, direct snap to the running back, and it has been effective for them all night long. He's just simply picking his hole, Mike. Yeah, man, man, just take a look. and uh, He don't need much of one, and he doesn't mind running in a little bit of traffic, does he? No, he doesn't. Second down, three yards to go. They gave him seven on the first down run. This time, Owens is the running back. He's going to take the Wildcat formation, and he's going to get the first down at the 20. So again, they're just lining up, snapping it straight to the line, to the running back, and just getting behind that big offensive line. And they do have size, and this is not, you know, on that uh, previous uh, third down, they had their big line in there. These are the smaller ones. Uh, so they have a, a, if you will, jumbo package that they can use. And this, this line that they have in right now is plenty big enough. Nicholas has checked back in the Wildcat. He's going to send the quarterback out, Futrell, to the uh, as a slot receiver to the right. Oh, that's got to be an offensive. Yeah, finally they did call it. And the, uh, the, the H back or the wing back on the right side just lunged forward just a little bit. Five yard penalty against Starkville. But Bio's got to make a play here. We got to slow down this momentum. Yeah. Because this is really just. Uh, low-risk, old-fashioned football. Smash mouth. It is, and they've got the size to do it. Come on, defense! First down, 15 now to go for Starville. Moves them back from the 20 to the 25. Let's go! Again, this time, Nicholas takes his direct snap. He cuts it back inside. Gets a pop at about the 22, though. But again, still picks up three yards. Yeah, they got a kid in here with the number eight, which is not on our uh, roster. It's about the size of a guard that they have as an H back, and again, just in there for blocking purposes. But you know, that's what they're that's what they're wanting to do right now. It's just grind it out. Well, Nicholson actually got credited with four yards. He's now closer to the 21. I see now. So yep. second down, and we'll call it 11 yards to go. They got to get down to the 10 to get the chains continue to move. This time. Futrell's kind of going to swing out to the right side. We got a flag in the backfield, and then also he's, he's trapped in the backfield. He'll lose about four yards. He will, but that's got to be a hold, I would have to think. And uh, Would you force a third and 15, Mike, or would you take the penalty? That's, that's, a, that's an important decision that the coach is going to have. I would I, imagine they're going to take the penalty. I'll take the yards. I think they will. Depends on where it was, too. I keep forgetting it's a spot foul from the point, and the point was probably a little behind, behind the line, line of scrimmage. scrimmage. I think it was, Mike. So that would be make perfect sense to take the uh, penalty. It does. It marks it back to the 39-yard line. So now that'll make it a second and... That's about the 34. Yeah, 34. I'm sorry. 34 yards. That makes about 24 to go. Second and 24 to go for Starkville. Futrell looking to throw. He does throw the ball. Intercepted. Intercepted. Goes to the 40 by Joseph Smith to the 50 to 40. They will not catch him. He's going to go all the way for the touchdown. And Powell Academy has taken a, and extended their lead here on a 65 yard touchdown interception return. Could you believe that speed that he put on there? I really thought they were going to be able to catch him. Next thing you look up, he's got five yards of separation. But, you know, that's the beauty of that 15-yard penalty against a team that's wanting to run, forcing them to try to throw, which is not their strongest suit. And uh, that's the second one where he's hit a wide-open bio uh, receiver. I thought I thought he was a receiver. I, I mean, it looked like he was throwing it to Joseph Smith. Yep. 
Joseph knew what to do with it though, didn't he? Yes, he did. Extra point attempt coming up. The kick is up, and the kick is good. 31 to 21. Miles extended its lead with 8.20 to play here in the fourth quarter. 31 to 21. Let's step aside. We'll come back with a bio kickoff. You're listening to Bio Academy Football on YouTube. Welcome back to Bio Academy. They're kicking off. They're going to take another swim kick. This time a little bit deeper down the sideline. Going to be called with a 30, 28 fumble, but he got on it. He being the Scarborough receiver at the 28 yard line. So well, now you know, Mark. Maybe we ought to kick it to four. <laughs> is that who had it? Yeah, I believe so. Okay. Well, Scarborough will take over at their own 28 yard line, which is. To me, a whole effective. lot better than 42. Oh, yeah. You Very know. effective kick that time. Yeah, I like that one a lot better, I tell you, Mike. 8-17 to play. We're in the fourth quarter. Bio 31 and Starkville 21. Got a 10-point lead. It is a two-score lead. That doesn't mean a whole lot right now because, again, Starkville's been pretty effective on the ground, but they have taken a long time to get there. Yes. So here we go. This time he's going to run it to the left, he being the quarterback. Just don't give up the big run. Knocked off his feet at the 34. And it stays in bounds. So pick up Rockwell. about. Yeah. Go ahead. And so the clock keeps running, which is in Bio's favor right now. They did pick up about five yards on that. Randall Futrell is the quarterback. He took it down, just didn't throw it. Took it on a, just a little end run around the left side. Picked up five, as you mentioned, Mike. Second down, five yards to go. We need to be sure, sure tacklers right here. Inside handoff. There we go. Jay Lewis is going to knock him off his feet. He does get up about four yards, maybe even close to five yards. But again, hard running that time again by Nicholas. It looks he'll, like he had enough for the first down. He does get the first down. Ball is marked at the 39. I tell you, they didn't even they didn't even measure that or no, anything. They didn't. It could have been a measurement. Oh well. First and ten. Starble. Ball's at their own 39-yard line. This time he tries to bounce it outside. Is that not a hole? Maybe not. Five-yard pickup that time. Run out of bounds by Jack Cartwright. That's Owens on the carry. Sure got a little tug there, didn't he, Mike? It looked like it to me. Five-yard pickup that allowed him to get to that corner. And I thought Jack did a really nice job fighting off that wide receiver yep, to get to the force. Yep. Probably a second down, five yards to go. Ball's at the start roll 44. Again, Futrell, the quarterback. He's going to look at He's going to throw it inside to the first running back. First down earned up over midfield. Again, just power football. Nicholas, again, has another first down for the Volunteers. Marshall Weaver on that tackle. Ball has crossed midfield, however. 7-13, clock stopped on the first down advancement. Now it'll kick back up. And we get down to about the seven-minute mark here in the fourth quarter. Bio leading 31 to 21. Again, a handoff to Nicholas, trying to bake his way inside the 40, still on his feet, and just nice running as picking and choosing his way for another volunteer first down. And again, that time, really, really good job by the offensive line, just uh, creating a pretty big hole here on the left side. Ran off or hit almost off the field with that block. 36-yard line is where the ball is marked. They're in a kind of a hurry-up offense, and they're being very, very good in it. Nicholas, again, straight up the middle. He'll pick up another four yards on first down, or he's finally wrestled to the ground. You know, I think the, the Starbuck coach has probably decided uh, we're, we're not putting the ball in the air again. Yeah, we, we seem to throw it to the wrong people when we do. <laughs> yeah, we do. 
So I know both like, teams at the end of this game, they're going to look back and say, what if? Yeah. And I know we all do that. But uh, uh, this, this is going to come down to a, a nail biter right here. Inside handoff again to Nicholson. Nicholas, excuse me, at the 26 yard line. Should be another first down, shouldn't it, Mike? It should. There, is there a flag down? Nope. No, I thought maybe for a second they were going to call for a mark, but uh, just uh, decided that he gained the first down. And uh, here we go. And as you mentioned, they are in a bit of a hurry up type. And they've been very efficient in it as well. Yep. This time, this time he'd run straight up the middle and quarterback. And the future will get about three yards. But again, finally wrestled down at the 23. You know, he runs like he's a whole lot bigger than he is. I mean, he's only like 5'11 and uh, about 160. 160, I think. Yeah. yeah. Pick up a three yards that time, Michael, first down. 538 and counting here in the fourth quarter. Futrell in the shotgun. He's going to look to throw. He does throw it. Yeah, got a man in the end zone. Intercepted. Intercepted. Intercepted by Bio Academy. That's Joseph Smith back there. And that's been uh, Futrell's favorite target tonight has been Joseph Smith. So, again, another interception. Mike, I believe you said you didn't think they were going to throw the ball. I, I think <laughs> I said he shouldn't. <laughs> and I think uh, the coach... I doubt he'll do it again, but we'll, well see. Well, I don't know. I mean, it, and he did throw it. I mean, it was man-man coverage, and, you know, you, you, you hope your receiver can go up and get it, but just a really good play by uh, Bio there to come up with that football. Well, to Futrell's credit on that one, he had the inside receiver. Yep. He, he had position. He just simply overthrew him a little bit, and Joseph was the only one who could get there. And that may be a factor of that wind, which is blowing a little bit that way. All right, your Bio Academy, you got 527 to go here in the fourth quarter. You're up by 10. See if we can run a little clock here and hold on to the football. There's Larson Ingram straight up the middle. He'll pick up a couple. No, I'm sorry, that's Joseph Smith, not Larson yeah. Ingram. Larson now checks in. Jay Lewis will check out. You know, Starkville only has two timeouts left, so it's a... Uh, you know, something else to kind of keep in mind is this clock rolls down. A couple of first downs would be absolutely huge right yep, here. And plus trying to get it out of your end of the field. No doubt. First and, uh, excuse me, second and seven for Bio. They're going from our left to our right here in the fourth quarter. They lead 31-21. Here's a pitch to Park Smith. He's going to be hemmed up trying to reverse this field. He's got nowhere to go. They have scouted that play. Yes, they have. Uh, like I said, they've been a little more confused by the uh, decoy part of it, but when he has gotten the ball, he has had nowhere to go. That's a loss of three back to the 10. That'd be third down and 10 back to the 20-yard line. So yep. got to get to the 30, of course, on the touchback. Ball came out to the 20-yard line. Uh, Clock four. does continue to run, however, with 4.15 and counting here to go in the fourth quarter. And Bio in no real big hurry. And they should not be. This time, uh, we'll fake it. Does Larson Ingram trying to get to the first down? He will get there to the 30, 35, and run out of bounds. Just speed, Mike, just absolute speed got that first down. It did, and i tell you what, another great block out there by Jack Hartwright. And uh, kind of made it to where there was no doubt. Boy, that's huge right there. Yeah, it was. 4.02 to go in clock stop right now, but it will start back up, of course, after the first down is marked. That and he, and he did go out of bounds, so. Oh, yeah. You're right. First down at the 37-yard line, so I guess it won't start until the, until the play starts. Ball is on the 37-yard line. Again, nice first down earned on a third down situation. Inside handoff, Alford Hill fighting for yards over the 40 to the 41. Let's just hold on to the football, guys. Ball's on the 41, so pickup of a nice four-yard pickup on first down, which you'll take that just about every time. Yeah, it was a nice hard run and a good pursuit by uh, uh, Starville to bring him down, but picked up about four yards and the clock is running. Three and a half minutes and counting here at Bio Academy. I would suspect after this, Bio and a start will call their you know, second time out. But got to, Mike. I believe they got to. Second and six. Bio milking the clock as they should. 
Snap comes there, inside handoff to Alford Hill. He'll try to fight for the first down, tries to elude a man. Nope, he must have gone down because, he did not. I don't know, we'll see. He must, official marked him down at the 44. He did not go down. And Starville has not called a timeout. It continues to run. Third down and about four yards to go for Alford Hill and Bio Academy. Oh, I thought if he could have slipped by that one, Mike, he might yeah. have had that first down. He may well have. But Ball. really a pretty good open field tackle by a DB out there for Starkville. Ball is at the 43. He got to get to the 47-yard line to keep the chains moving for the Colts. The blue and white Colts of Bio Academy trying to hold on to this football. This time Larson Ingram will not get there, but he'll get very, very close to the first down, but he'll be a couple of yards shy. Now Starver will call for their timeout. And this kind of puts it, uh, you know, it's kind of useful for Bio because they got a little bit of a decision to make with fourth down and a good one yard to go. Wow. At least have an opportunity to talk about it. That is a big decision for the coaching staff right here. It's a fourth and about a yard and a half to go. 221. Do you play the field position game, Mike? Do you punt it away, make Starble drive the length of the field and use up clock? Or do you try to go ahead and put this game away right here? Well, if it was me, because you do have a 10-point lead, it's a two-score game. I try to make it as long a field as you can. Make them, you know, go into something they don't like to do, which is pass if, if they have to. They really don't have time to run it and be as deliberate as they want. So I, I, I think I would punt it away. Well, I believe that's what Bio is going to do. I believe Joseph Smith is going to try to drop back and punt it and try to pin them back. You have to look for the, for the block. Yeah, of and they don't have anybody deep right now. So they do have everybody. Bio has got to hold out right here. They don't need a quick score here. Although so this, it is a good snap from center. The punt is a way. It is a driving kick that will go out of bounds, however, across the way at about the 30-yard line. Not a particularly great punt, but at the same time, it puts them at about 70 yards away from pay dirt. I think very effective, though, and uh, the ball got caught up in the wind. It did, and uh, you know, and again, the wind has changed, and uh, it's kind of blown across the field more than uh, directly into us, and it, it took the ball sideways. So they've got it marked, marked at what about the 35? At the 35, Mike. So like you talked about. 65 yards about a 20 go. yard punt but it yeah. gets the same time you, you you're you're forcing you're forcing starville to have to do something that maybe they're not quite as familiar with got to have some good defense bow loosens up their secondary a little bit that look to throw is futural he's going to try to get somebody behind ball is going to be in oh. the air Ooh, that could have been intercepted right there it was tipped at the line of scrimmage by one of the defensive linemen i believe that was galladay i think so i <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh, Bio seemed to have that one pretty well defended. The tip might have hurt him. You know, you may be right, Mike. Yeah. Second down, 10 yards to go for Starkville. They only have one timeout, as you mentioned, Mike. They were forced to use one just a minute ago. Bio has all three of theirs if they need them. This time, Future was going to run it up the middle on a quarterback draw. He does lose a spin move, picks up about six or seven yards, but I think Bio will take that. You know, I think we need to be just a little bit careful with that rush and just try to work on containing uh, the quarterback and uh, not letting him get past that, that initial rush. I agree. This time they throw it out incomplete. Bat it down. Fourth down. I agree with you, Mike. Keep them in front of you. Yeah. Don't give a quick score. Just don't let anybody get behind you real quick right here. Yeah. Fourth down. I got we got an injured bio be academy offered. caught. Yeah, injured player, I think is Alfred Hill. I'm not Kinda sure exactly what happened more to More like upper body is what Alex, he was going for. Alex Lopez will check in to replace him. Yeah, see if you can throw over him. There's only a minute and 46 seconds to go. Not sure exactly what happened to Alfred, but uh, he'll come out of the ball game. Like they're kind of favoring that right arm. Hopefully yep. it's just maybe a little bit of a stinger or something like that. Yeah, I hope so. All right, here we go. Fourth down. I'm not a doctor. I won't begin. Please no. even do it. 
Fourth down, three yards to go. This is the ball game for Starville Academy right here, fourth and three. This time Future takes it up the middle. He will slide outside for the first down and run out of bounds. We don't need a penalty now. We no. do not need a senseless penalty over on the Starville sideline. Well, I, I think that there, I don't think there was anything wrong with that. I mean, he, he did run him out of bounds and that was it. Yeah, I don't know. I thought I saw a late push is why I said that, Mike. You know, I think the, uh, well, I mean, maybe emphatically ran him out of bounds. Maybe so. First and 10, that was a big pickup for Starkville. First and 10 at the 47-yard line, 136 to play. Starkville back to throw. Future going to go for the long ball. He got the home run guy out there. Incomplete. Off his end. He had him beat. He, he, he was behind the defense, and he would have had a quick score, which is exactly what we did not need. Did not. That was a well-thrown football. Just yes. slightly overthrown. But, uh, yeah, I think, all right, guys. And you know what Starville's thinking. They're, just, they're thinking touchdown and, ex and then uh, onside kick. Yep. So, second down, 10 yards to go. There's a minute and a half, and it'll seem like forever for this coaching staff. Yeah. Second down, 10 yards to go. Bio loosened up the secondary a little bit this time. He's going to run the quarterback draw. and going to be sacked in the backfield. Nice play by the Bio play. defense. That is Isaiah Galladay, the freshman. He'll give him credit for a yard. I don't think he got that far. I really don't think he got that far. I don't either. Third down and nine to go for Starkville. Bio leading 31-21 with a minute and six seconds to play. Galladay pressing for future and he goes throw it down the right sideline incomplete off his off his fingertips had him there and would have been not a first exactly down. a bad no not a bad throw we're back to a fourth and nine fourth and nine for starball so this is in effect the ball game right here 59 seconds left to go keep everything in front of you coach godfrey and his staff looking on with Fourth down, nine to go. Clock is ticked. It's stopped, of course, on the incomplete pass with 59 seconds to go. But, st but the Colts are within a minute here of winning a, a very, very important district football game. This time, Futro is good to throw. He's going to be sacked if he's, if he does throw it away, though. I thought he was down, but it doesn't I matter. Thought it was down, but I also thought it would be grounded. There was nobody in the area. You're right. And do you see a penalty marker? I do not. I do not. This is a victory formation, and this one should be over. Simply an incomplete pass will go down in the record books in 54 seconds, and Salt will only has one timeout. Right. This one should be blue and white victory. Yep. Yeah, we got the V formation, so now we have seen this work. Uh, we've seen Cleveland High School mess this up against Lafayette County some years ago. So it's not, you know, we're going to have to snap the ball maybe three times if they use their We're going to get up under center for the first time all year. I believe we are. Larson Ingram is going to yeah. take it, take a knee. And Starkville is not contesting it. I don't think Starkville will call a timeout. I don't, I don't see any reason why they should. Both these teams, of course, will make the playoffs. And again, this is this one will go a long, long way toward some good seeding for the Colts of Bio Academy. Huge ball game. Absolutely. Good second half. Yeah. 21 to 16 was the score at halftime, Mike. And the Colts came out and added 15 in the second half and did not give up a point. This was kind of big boy football tonight. Absolutely. You know, both teams kind of you know, took some shots and uh, overcame them, but in the end, it was uh, bio. And uh, really, the bio defense. Absolutely. You know, 31 to 21 is the second kickoff. 3 2 1. There's the horn right there. Final score bio 31 and Starbull 21. Bio improves to 7 and 2 and three and one in the conference, which means nothing, not really. But uh, they do improve to seven and two overall. 
and, and Starville drops to five and four overall. Bio has played a really, really good second half. And I tell you, I still got to tip my hat to Starville Academy. They've got four losses on the year, but they have, they, they've got four tough, good losses. They do. There is such a thing. They do, and uh, they played some tough teams. I, I think, Mark, that they played Leap Academy, didn't they? And Leap, I think Leap is I beating um, it's either, Heritage tonight. It's either Leap or Lamar. Let me see. Can't remember. Well, I could be wrong on that. But I thought their losses were pretty good losses if, if there's such a thing. Yeah, I think you're right. Big celebration in the middle of the field, as you can imagine. A lot of bow uh, youngsters, of course, going out on the field to help their team and their schools celebrate, and a well, well deserved football victory. They did lose to Leak Academy, Mike, as you mentioned. I mean, Leak, is, Leak is a big dog. No doubt about it. You know, so let's talk just a second, Mike, if you will, while we got just a second here. Yeah. Looking at the playoff picture, coming into tonight's game, Heritage was number one, Oak Forest was two, Leak was three, and Bio and Central Hines were tied for the fourth spot. Starville and Kapai were right behind them, tied for that sixth spot, and Simpson was number eight. Pillow followed, Lamar, St. Joe, and then Cathedral was the 12th team. The bottom five, of course, will not make the playoff, but since with this win, the power points that go along with not only a win, but a quality opponent will have to keep Bio, you would think, in that fourth position pretty I, solid. I would think, and, and who was Central Hines playing tonight, Mark? Were they? Central Hines was playing Kapow. Yeah, so we, something's going to change, you know, in that area right there as well. So probably head up. They will be head up with uh, looking at see it. They'll probably be keeping an eye on Central Hines and Kapow. Yeah. Now, Bio, again, does have a game next Friday night, of course. It'll be on the road, Magnolia Heights, and it was a very winnable game. But uh, at the same time, you got to take care of business as well to get to get to that playoff structure. You can, and you know the difference is. I, I would, I would believe, uh, you know, 99% that if Bio were able to win tomorrow next week, that they'll have one of those bad spots. But even if they don't, Mike, I'm like you. Even if they don't, they will still host the first round game. Yeah, they will of the playoffs. Sure. So we'll simply wait to see. All right. Well, I tell you, it's a nice celebration here for homecoming here on the campus. Again, well played football game. We expected a knockdown drag out, and that is what we got. We sure did. Two quality teams here. I, I promise. Flip told me before the season started, one of the things he wanted to do, one of his goals has always been to close the gap. Yeah. Close the gap. And he did that this year by beating Washington, by beating Pilla, by beating Starville, playing Heritage close. And I think he has done a lot, a very good job with his assistants and this team to close that gap. Just think about where we were a year ago. Absolutely. A year ago, we were at no chance to make the playoffs. Absolutely. And, uh, not only are we going to make the playoffs, but we're going to make the playoffs with probably a home game at the very worst in the first round. I think you're right. So. All right, we'll try to wrap it up here. Next Friday night, as we mentioned, we're on the road to Magnolia Heights. Bows improved to 7-2 and two on the year. And they will try to improve to 8-2 next Friday night at Magnolia Heights. So, but no further thought, Mike. We'll just go ahead and call it a night. Give you the final score. A big, big win for the Colts. Yes. That's Bow wins, 31 to 21 over Starkville Academy. Good night, everybody, and thank you for joining in tonight to watch Bio Academy on YouTube. Thank you so much. Good night.